Hello people, welcome back to the podcast. Now, this intro is going to be about four or five minutes long, but it's actually going to be purposely for the listeners. So, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm an intro skipper on my podcast, but this is actually more, it's not going to be like, oh, just rate my podcast and stuff. I actually want to speak to the consumer of my podcast, because I've got like a, I've got a wee niche podcast. The, the audience is small enough that I can get to know people that listen to it, um, and it's not like overwhelming. So I've been doing a wee bit of research, right? Shockingly, now this is this came as a big shock to me, um, and gave me it struck fear into my soul a wee bit. So over fifty percent of the people who listen to the podcast are English. Now, why does that give me the fear? Because if you're a listener of the podcast, you'll know that there may have been some slagging off of the English for probably all 78 episodes prior to this one. So, I'm probably going to have to change that attitude, but it's very hard when it's ingrained in you from birth. Now, but I want to explain one thing so you can so you can understand my point of view. I have an, I've, I've got a complex with this. And I'm just going to admit it, I'm just going to air it out. I've maybe mentioned it once or twice in the podcast, but it's something I'm really, really embarrassed about. And I would like if I would like this to not go up, like people start telling me on my Instagram that I'm a fraud and stuff. But on my passport, on my place of birth, it says my place of birth is Hammersmith. If you're wondering what part of Scotland that's in, it's in a place called London. And unfortunately, I've I've been cursed with the Englishism myself. Now, why this gives me a complex is because I've met quite a lot of Scottish and Irish people, especially since that have had the luxury of their parents have made the call that when they're son or daughter was about to be born they've made the trip back to the homeland so that they can plop them out and they can have the nationality that they deserve however my dad decided it would be easier to stay in london where they were living at the time we only lived there until i was free and he decided to have me there I think this is only a Scottish and Irish thing where people go back. I think Welsh people don't really care because they pretty much are English anyway. Like, half of them are, like, they don't even sound Welsh. They're just, like, there's a point that's, like, halfway through Wales where they all just, like, accept they're pretty much English. And, like, they're just being Welsh. Like, what? Oh, you're Welsh. Cool. Cool. All the valleys. Oh, that was actually the best Welsh accent I've ever done. (laughs) Anyway... The complex I have is my dad calls me English. And he's been doing it like every, at least like once every three or three months he'll slag me off for being English. However, he has he himself is the person who is responsible for that. So I had the Cockney accent up until I was free and then I pretty much morphed into what I am now. I am so it's it's pretty complicated in here, something I should delve into. I should probably pay for another batch of therapy, really delve into that issue itself. But all I'm trying to say is I'm going to continue to slag off the English, but you can call me a hypocrite, and it'll be our d- dirty little secret that you'll know what I'm doing. Just don't call me out on Instagram. Um, also, I've been asking, on if you're listening on Spotify, there will always be a question related to the episode and like i don't know where it is but it comes up and um, last time i was just asking who listens to the podcast and tell me a bit about yourself we had i'm just gonna get this up just now because it's good you know it's good to speak to your audience and see what's going on so i had daniel kearney who works in retail he's a 27 year old male and um, married with kids it's a bit too much information daniel but he says he listens to the pod because he likes he's thinking about maybe becoming a pt and he likes to hear different experiences we'll get kelly beauty therapist and a step okay and um, kelly's actually she she listens to it because it's not just about fitness and stuff. However, Kaylee's just signed up with me as a client, so that's great. Lenny D, 40-year-old with, with three 
children, mum of three, like to listen for the honest advice on the gym and it helps her with her gym journey. So there will always be a question like that in the sort of description on Spotify um, and that's going to help just me get to know my audience a bit more. I want to get this like a wee nice wee community, you know. I am. Um, that's why we're doing a lot of the free sessions and stuff, and um, which is still another thing. If you want to learn how to lift, and you're anywhere like fifty percent of you are going to be miles away, um, so you can DM me free session on Instagram if you're looking for a seat free session in here where you can I can teach people how to lift as well. And um, that's another thing we're doing. I'm trying to keep this niche and like more sort of like really focusing on helping people. Um before I speak about the guest I'm about to have on, if you're on Spotify, so many of you listen to it and you don't follow the podcast, just click follow and you're gonna get a little notification every time this podcast is coming out, which will be Tuesday, 7 in the morning. If you've not rated the podcast yet, please do. I'm trying to hit 200 ratings before Christmas. I'm big on Spotify. If you want to do something on Apple or YouTube, great, but Spotify is the one I'm going for. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my spiel. I'm just trying to get to know my audience a bit better. You can even Instagram DM me like who you are, like why you listen and stuff. I've been replying to quite a lot of them. And then, yeah, so this episode, I'm not going to dive too much into it, but just to give you a bit of background, this man, this gentleman now, that we now know he's a gentleman, you might have heard me speak about this before, but I got called out by someone before, and they made a two minute video about me, and it was all rather taken out of context, you could tell he'd spent a lot of time just trying to pick things that I'd maybe said that you can then take out of context, um, and it was a pretty, not very nice feeling when I watched the video and it was all because he'd commented a few times on my videos and he was basically having a go at me for like maybe not giving cardio the best rep and it wasn't really my, that wasn't really my message and I have, I did actually think about it but it wasn't, my audience is different to his and I was trying to get him to see that point of view but I didn't get involved in the cancelling thing or the, or the, the, back and forth calling out thing i just messaged him saying mate i do not care about this i don't think any of this sort of stuff is helpful and i was like if you were next to me you wouldn't disagree with me and if you did disagree with me you would be able to see my point and you'd realize both of us are pretty i watched his videos and was like i don't really disagree with this guy and i don't think you would disagree with him if he actually spoke to me and um, so that's why i had him on where i actually really like him i'll probably speak to him again i would definitely meet him again um Actually, like, not. I genuinely really like him. Like, he's sound, and if you ever want to go to CrossFit and you're near the borders or whatever, I, I know he'd be an unreal coach. Like, I know he would. He's sound. He's really sound. I think he just had a bad day. But I called him a CrossFit gimp. That's why he sacked. That's why he went for me. He didn't like the CrossFit gimp comment, which is fair enough. But I was just like, I've had enough of this guy giving me shit, so he's a gimp, which is usually how my brain works. Um, But, yeah. Stephen Rayner is his name. That's just to give you a little preface before you get into the, the podcast. It's a bit of a long one, but it, and it's an erratic conversation, but it's good. So enjoy the show um, and make sure you rate that podcast, you know. Get it rated. Enjoy. Why did you buy the car? So actually, it was mainly my missus. So I had the kid and then I've always been... My current job's quite well paid. Right? That's always thing I never talk about, but it's really, really well paid. And that's why I've no jumped ship from one to the main stuff yet. And so she was like, likes the better things in life sometimes. So she likes to spend money on handbags and shit. And I've just never got it. I've always had shit cars. I've had the same t-shirts for 10 years. I've just never been like that, no matter how much I got paid. And so she was like, treat yourself, treat yourself. So we went to the garage. And I don't know, I just got caught up in the, I can afford it, so why would I know? And she was like, oh, but it's got ISOFIX. I keep making that joke to people. I got it because it's What is that? It's a thing that mm, fits fancy car seats. So one that like spins and shit. And I was like, yes, but- My four feet. I, exactly, it does have that. I, does it? No, I'm good. Like, probably. <laughs> Fucking yeah. Probably, exactly. <laughs> right, so I was caught up in that. She's like, oh, that's a really nice car. And then I got, I literally got sold to her. I got mugged off. The guy's like, oh, it's this. And she's like, it's lovely. I was getting sold to off both. I've got a salesman here and I've got her. Yeah, here it got. sounds like your missus was a bigger salesman. It was mental. And she's like, oh, and, and then actually when I, I test drove it, I'm like, oh, because I'd never been in a fast car before. Ironically, so when I talked before about I'd done the photos of the car tours, so went and done videos for these car tour, luxury car tour companies, McLarens and all that kind of stuff. And I drove a bit in a Suzuki, uh, like Ignis, chasing them, right? Mm -hmm. in the North Coast 500 McLarens and Ferraris, and I'm literally in this Suzuki, <laughs> right? Because I never gave a fuck about it. 
And so was that a company car or that's your car? That's my car. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so when we were there, she's like, oh yeah, but it's got this and it's nice. And I had him sell me and I had this nice hang around me and that. And I suddenly I went away. I was like, I've just got that car. Oh shit. And then I thought, well, maybe it'll be all right because I can afford it. So it's all right. And then suddenly it just wore off. I was like a month later, I got bored of people saying nice car. And I'm like, oh my God, but it's burning all this money in my pocket. And I did need it. And uh, I so it's just, just about an insecurity thing. Like, that's Do you think? It. I think there was a part of it for sure. I had to, I mean, this, we were speaking about this a lot on the last podcast I've done, but I think I've that would probably be the biggest thing I've suffered with is money insecurities. And I think yeah, that's yeah. driven a lot. And it's funny because I've never actually like really focused on money. Yeah. But if anything, because me showing off my shit Ford Fiesta and talking about it is almost like still my insecurities. Yeah, it's like an it's almost like an look at me, I don't give so yeah, a yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's almost the same sort of thing. I've done it. I've done it before as well. Like when I talk about that, I've had the same T-shirts for however blah blah. It's the same. It's the it's the flip reverse of it. Yeah. Um, but I'd never like admit that that was like a flex. But but it is. And at the same time, I'm like, should I be enjoying this? Should I be putting it away to save it? Should I square it away? It's like money's odd and only for the last like year and a half two years when i talked about that moving to speak to a new set of people never ever talked about money with anybody specific figures right like ever and then now i'm like all oh, right this is what comes in this is what goes out this is how much i'm making this is a goal and when i was listening to that podcast you were talking about and you were saying you know, which one was that so that was the one from the business mentor one yeah okay I just went up listened to it on the way up we were talking about stuff like money and stuff the 100k year and the 10k month and the, all that kind of stuff and how it's such a massive thing i've always been quite driven by that before but it's funny because i was driven more by it when i had no money and then now that you make a bit more and you get comfortable i just take a shit anyway like you're just no bothered it becomes less important and because especially when i talked about the hospital thing and that where you know i really kicked the arse out it and ended up really ill i was like this is now worth it i need to be doing the things i enjoy for enough to live off and that is more sustainable than just hating everything about your life do you think, do you think your life almost looks like that have you seen that graph with the amount of money you make and it gets to like I can't, I think it's in dollars, but it's probably equivalent to like between 60 and 80 grand or whatever, where the levels of happiness like uh, flatlines. Yeah. Do flat you think yeah. that's like what sort of happened with you? Because you're like, I got to a certain point, I stopped giving a fuck. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you've got that, uh, you've got to that point where you're not stressed. Because I think the, uh, the whole first bit is just like, no stress. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like there's less and less stress, but yeah, then yeah. you get to a point where you don't care. Is that I, it's not like, you know, I don't make millions and millions of quid, nothing by that, nothing, but just got comfortable. And literally, it's because of my full time job and I've always wanted to chase the next thing. Mate, this fucking Garmin, why is it? Do you know the first time I've only got this like two weeks ago and I was picking up a boy called Shane that came on the podcast and he was ringing me when I was at the airport and I tried to answer my Garmin. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> does it have a phone? i was like hello does it have a phone function on it i don't know <laughs> but it just started ringing there and it's a phone it's a number from london but let me switch this off because that will throw me right off I've, I've uh, seen, topic I've, have you ever seen somebody talking on their phone like, on, their watch? on their watch i don't know oh, I've, I've, i hate it oh, oh do people do it oh yeah people do it people speak right, do on not disturb and do not fucking do not phone my watch i'm just gonna switch it off because my watch is gonna start going off again i reckon and it's really gonna put me off what were you saying <laughs> Where were we up to? Well, anyway, I just want to kind of know what you, like, explain to me what you're doing right now and how you got into coaching as well. Yeah. And so then we'll yeah. get into how we met. <laughs> right, right, no, no, you can go on. I was, think, I was thinking about yeah. that. As, obviously, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, but. Yeah. Um, all right, so coaching-wise, I got, so right back at start, came out of school, uh, started, did MMA for a bit, uh, was rubbish at it, got in a cage, got battered, left that, got really chunky uh you might have seen one how chunky this one's 126 kilos at my heaviest i'll be honest with you i might not notice the chunkiness because of the gothicness uh, yeah that is true <laughs> that, that there was that but that phase had kind of fallen off so i was okay. less goth more chubby because at that point like the whole classic film scene thing where like i got in really good shape and got really angry and that and angsty like a film that happened to me that was a real thing um, so I'd like shaved a mohawk in and shit. I didn't have that eye. Eh? Tragic. Eh? I know, I know. I'm like, I can batter anybody in that. And then ironically got my heat punted. Uh, which is, which is when you went into MMA. Exactly. So when did you get chubbier and how much weight did you put on? So I went from, I fought my last fight or the, the fight I had at 74 kilos. Huck. And then ended up probably two or three years later at 126. Um, that's so a lot. Was, but so I was way too skinny when I was cutting to fight. Well, see, I've got to seventy three kilos before you're taller. I mean, I think you've got a bigger general frame than me, and I was 
I looked like a junkie. There's, there, yeah, there's, there's pictures. And I was from a bodybuilder doing it to me. Like I, sh- ah, right, I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah, even, shit. I should never. Like seventy nine is like the lowest I can get Aye. without it being like horrible. Aye. Well, I walk around now at a comfortable like hundred kilos. Yeah, right, and so I'm that, like eighty five, and I can Aye, walk so, about. So that, so that's the like the difference. So that happened, and I went up to that, and I was super depressed. Like the the classic smoking, drinking, blah blah, whatever. I, I never play that. But I got to that point, and then found CrossFit and um just one thing <laughs> you still on the vapes <laughs> I see no, you posted no, no, through no. the gothic phase vapes yeah, we're yeah, coming yeah. for I ourselves I was obsessed with them for so <laughs> long I was more interested in the intricacies that went with it so I reckon if you saw the vapes from way back it was like building the coils and all that so uh, I've always yeah, been yeah. like that when I was younger I used to take stuff apart remotes and all that kind of quite an autistic trait take stuff <laughs> apart <laughs> take, take stuff apart and just be like ah, okay bye and then put it back together and then actually there was a time with the vapes where it wasn't just like these ones that are shit now that you just throw away um, but where you like build coils onto them and you like you figure out the wattage and I was like pure obsessed with it. like and that this has become a common theme when we talk I get pure obsessed with stuff and then just chuck it um, so I just like I'll t- and I'll get ridiculously either get at it or I'll just spend so much money on it and then I'll get chucked and I'll forget about it putting a cover and then move to the next thing my bud hates it I do the same mate it's wild I'm the same with heart rate right now oh yeah have you ever heard but, of whoops <laughs> uh, no oh fuck them but my missus keeps catching me like we'll go to bed and I'll be like I'll she'll look at me and she went, Do you know what you've spent two and a half hours on Strava? <laughs> looking <laughs> yeah. at a run she done four years ago. Yeah, trying yeah, to work yeah. out your heart rate, even because yeah, you didn't yeah. have a heart rate monitor. And I was like, You're gonna have to i I've only started going out with it five months ago. I was like, You signed up to this. Right, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. I am a freak. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it happens well, exactly that. But like I kept mine those things kind of hidden for for quite a while. Mm. And then suddenly she realized and she's like, What the fuck? What's this new thing? What's like Companies wise, like I sold supplements for a while, then I was doing beard oil, then I was doing fuck, and I just decided to just do this. It's like the shiny thing just moved it. Mm. Um, but then I happened to find CrossFit, um, hated it, thought it was ridiculous and stupid and cringe and just bashed on it for ages when I'd seen it before because it was quite early. Can you on. move that a wee bit closer? You're the mic. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have to be right close right. to you, just like. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I found CrossFit and then um, kind of got, after I got over the whole, this is a cringe fest and blah, blah, blah. Like, because they did this thing where you'd show up and at the end everybody would clap and they'd be like well done and it was honestly is this the one you worked from so no so there's been three separate ones in the area this was the only one that existed in in the borders and it was just this one guy that run it get on him later on um <laughs> oh it sounds juicy <laughs> oh mental um but anyway he was the the one guy that run it and then um so got into that and just got super super obsessed with it. at the time i was still working from a call center and then i went up to manager and that and then the two kind of combined where I was taking training for new agents when I became manager. So I was taking big groups of like people and training them how to be on the phones and complaints and the normal kind of shit. And then while I was getting fitter and I was starting to compete in CrossFit, the two kind of combined. And I was like, I really like teaching people stuff. And funnily enough, side note, when I left school to go do music, um, I was going to become a music teacher. Turned out that I didn't like teaching kids who didn't want to be doing music. You didn't want to be a pedo. Exactly. I didn't want to be a pedo. So that's a, that's a fair, a fair point. But they, but, so, but actually what was happening when I was doing that was the parents were bringing them along and the kids fucking hated it. They were like, I don't fucking want to be here. And I was like, well, I don't want to teach people who don't want to be taught. So I thought, right, well, I can bring this back up again. So then I was like, well, maybe I could become a CrossFit coach of some sort. So then ended up doing that, took my level one and then started taking on like CrossFit classes and whatever else. And that was- What is the CrossFit qualifications? Cause they're- Oh, it's dog shit. Like, I have, that's I what I've heard, no, but they're it's, well it's, expensive, aren't they, as well? It's a grand for a weekend. And, and I could just do it tomorrow, can I? You could tomorrow, and yeah. you could teach somebody how to snatch tomorrow. In and I've never snatched it's, in my life. Nah, it's mental. Like, yeah, that's what I've I heard. I completely, completely disagree with, with that as a whole thing. Um, CrossFit would bash me and ban me for ever saying it, but... Qualifications you know, a, in general in yeah. this industry are just dumb, to be honest. Right. Yeah, I, agreed, agreed. But the fact that that one is at least the level 3 PT was however many weeks over, like, at least that. There's very... There's not a huge amount of transfers over, but at least you're on a program properly. I've said this a safe. few times, though. You don't, I didn't learn how to program properly. They, yeah. had, they had me... They were like, you need to come up with a tricep. I was like, oh my gosh, right. And then, like, I, I sent it away the first time and they were like, that's wrong. And then I had to do it in person as well. And I was like, right, so you want me to do a tricep and it's all legs? And I went, what, so like a leg press, a goblet squat and a leg extension? They were like, perfect. And I was like, oh my God. And I had like a woman that had, a woman who was doing the PT course who had never really lifted before. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'd also already been coaching a bit for a while. Right. Yeah, um, so, so mine, mine was similar. So I did mine quite recently because it was online. Thing. So it took me, it took me a year to do it because 
I was just getting so annoyed with it because I would send my stuff off. They'd send it back three weeks later and then be like, you need to fix this. And I was like, you tell me I need to fix that wee tiny thing that's also so stupid. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that. And then I need to wait three weeks on you maybe tell me it's still wrong. Yeah. I was like, the, fuck this. The learned experience because I'd, I'd done, I think before I even started, I put a post up, I don't know, however long ago, saying I'd coached a thousand CrossFit classes. A big thing for me. And then I've seen that. Yeah. But then When I, was that? That was like, I don't know, maybe eight, nine, ten months ago, okay. something like that. But then I only, that was only when I decided to do my level three PT. So I was doing one-to-one -one coaching in a CrossFit capacity and then did this because I was like, actually, I prefer it to be more general. But then what I was finding was the experience that I'd got from coaching was way more than anything. Like I'd already been in it seven years by this point. And then I'm like, right, I'm going to do this level three PT. I think it was kind of brought up a bit by the place I'd done it. I know the guys and I've followed them for a long time. The gym that hosts it and they're like amazing guys, which meant that, but if you take them away from it, I was like, no, nah, this is fucking this is so <laughs> bad shit. Mate. Um, so yeah, so, so that, so that happened. The CrossFit just fell into it and then decided I liked the, I don't actually like, I'll prefix this with specific me and one person in a place. So I do like just, you know, that hourly rate stuff. It's not for me. I've now decided that it's no, something I get a huge amount out of. And I think it's because like, so I run that big functional fitness competition, the Reaver Games. Um, I do like a lot of charity stuff and that. And I like to, when I'm doing something, be able to help a lot of people at once, even if it's like not as much, because I know that I could help one person way more in that hour. But if I can help people a bit less, but more at a time, and then kind of make that exponential, I, I get more for that. But I had to really experience that for a long time before I decided it. Before I was like, I'm just doing this because I think it's a thing I should do rather than I'm doing it because I love the one-to-one -one thing, if you know what I mean. So classes for me were just much better and I got so much merit of that. Yeah, I, th I think it's a very learned skill as well. So I, I think the whole bog standard approach, I'm going to take this off because I keep looking at it, it's doing my head in. Um, the whole approach for PTs get taught in general, like taking someone for three sessions a week yeah. is just a bog, it's a terrible business model for everyone all around anyway because what happens is after like eight to 12 weeks you're only gonna from then on you're only gonna be teaching them like one to three move, new movements max and you're pretty much just gonna count their reps and be sound to them and that, push you are that, gonna that. add like more weight than they would add yeah. and that sort of thing but you should be try to move them away from that and then they become attached to you yeah. being with them all the yeah. time so that's obviously not good as well because yep. then they're paying money they shouldn't they don't uh, need to pay and it's just a shit business model but that's yeah. what everyone's taught and also to be honest some people struggle like well most pt struggle to get enough people even in that business uh, model never yeah. mind uh, but it's so like mate that i don't know what other industries are really like but this one's fried uh, it's, it's really bad it's mental it's mental and that like it's we, the wild wild west it's crazy and like socials we'll get onto that when we chat about what or the thing before but like it's the same shit it's mental everybody's doing like their own thing in essence like i feel like everybody in a perfect world would have the same thing and all it would be filtered with is your personality or your kind of spin on it whereas it's no this random thing of here's my random thing that works or my random thing that works better or mines or mines or mines because that's what's fucked it because hmm. you have to have a unique selling point because the route to market's so easy now like it, it's it's pissed to get there really not so much to actually gain clients but to be in the space and literate with your opinion you don't have to do much you can just go exactly like the level one that i just talked to for crossfit you can go away for a weekend and go I'm the master on this subject. You're like, are oh, you fuck? Like, but just if, if you shout the loudest about your thing, people are going to listen because they're forced in it. And that's what's, that's what's fucked about it. It's just, it's mental. And also when chat GPT can write your program in three seconds, what the fuck? You know what I mean? It's, it's wild. It's mental. It's why you're trying to just try to convince people stop going online. Aye. Like, yeah, just, yeah, aye and yeah, I yeah. done it, but also like my first, full year was all online but it also was locked down and then i done the thing where i moved to london uh, yeah. and i couldn't afford to actually work in a gym but that's why i moved back and moved back in but it really was the wild west there's other so there's stuff i just want to ask you about before we get into some other things because are you see you posted stuff about your mental health and stuff just now is are you still struggling about i know you said you'd bipolar disorder as well which yeah. a wee bit i was like oh, i get get yeah, yeah well, i get like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I get yeah, it. Because you went, some of you will go, that'll make sense. And I was like, I'm the some. It's funny because so so many folk done that. And like, because I. I'm only kidding, by the way. No, I, no, no, I, no, like, I, like I told you, I didn't. 
I was a wee bit annoyed at the start, but I honestly was like, I looked at your stuff and I was like, he won't actually dislike so, me if so, he meets me. So yeah, so that, I want to explain that in, in, in detail as to why I think that's important. But well, yeah, we so, talk about what happened. Yeah, so so basically, um, and I'll prefix this with the reason and why. So like, I think that people like you and me who are willing to put your face onto something and back up something is very important. And when we talked about how Friday is, you've got all these little hundreds of people in echo chambers chatting shit. And I think it's important when people like us are willing to put your face out for other people to see us conversating on something like that. So basically what happened was, uh, you post a video on something, cardio doesn't really elicit fat loss, but what you meant was, it's easier for people to have a route to market in weightlifting or in, in lifting weights than there is to, to cardio. And There's just, a lot of nuance in that. Uh, subject itself especially specific like loads of nuance even when we're talking about crossfit and your specific clientele yeah, yeah, yeah. to that way like it's very different if i'm taking somebody for three hours of workouts and i've got very high level sport athletes that are doing three training sessions a day of course it does but if it's somebody who you're just trying to get into the gym for the first time to squat bench deadlift if they come in and walk on a, a treadmill for 10 minutes which might be the max of what they're capable of at that time is that going to less any fouls is it fuck like you'd be as well just walking to the shop and start parking further away from but the even the more thing, nuance right? than that the way i the way I sort of think about it is also from my past experience and also the type of people that I speak to. And uh, like the, the barrier to entry for lifting is obviously harder because it's a skill set that you need to learn. And then I look at like the low barriers to entry for cardio. And I, from talking to like however many people I've worked with that's like my type of client that I attract, I always like feel that they go to like spin classes yeah those sort of things so i'm more just trying to give them i'm trying to break that barrier to entry to lifting and try to get them but see if they went here i go to crossfit i would be like that i'm not yeah, talking to you yeah, yeah. or even just like some sort of functional class but it's like the people that want to learn absolutely nothing but still want to yeah because you also have the people that are just never ever ever going to do anything yeah. and i'm not trying to talk to them people yeah, they can yeah, do what yeah, they yeah. want yeah. but it's the people that are already like i would like to learn lifting but this spin class is so much easier to not do. I'm trying to convince them to lift. Ah, and that's so. pretty much uh, yeah, it. That's yeah. the way I'm looking at but, it. But also I agree with it from a point of longevity. If I could pick one for somebody when I talk to like, so a lot of the clients that I've had recently have been much older, but there's one specific client um, and uh, she loves me talking about it all the time. She, um, Matty, she, so she's 27 stone. She's post cancer. She's in remission. Her hips are full of tumors, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And she now does five classes a week. And for her, cardio realistically is relatively unrealistic but moving lifting some type of weight is going to stop the likelihood of degenerative bone disease it's going to help her moving like it was a huge step for just to get her sitting up off and on of a box so like that kind of stuff weightlifting for that and now so it just completely de depends on the clientele now when i'm talking to older clients it is all about degenerative bone disease cardio isn't going to help that weight as lifting weights is so like yeah there's there's so much nuance to it all over the shop that, that and the hard sense. thing is short form content that's why that's i was fun. sort of like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you actually did make me think about stuff. That's how I, I know we'll have a decent conversation because yeah, yeah. I've changed the way I saw. The thing is, when I started, I built it all off short form content. And I don't even see if I watched my first like 200 videos, I'd be like, I would never say that ever again. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so it's a like a whole thing. We are learning more and more. Oh. And then if you take, when you've came at me and said, whether I think you're putting a bad rep on cardio. I'm not actually meaning that. Yeah, so I'm yeah, like, yeah, no, I did no, go back sure. and watch it and go, right, where has he picked that actually yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. After I got over for the anger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there as well. Right. Cross CrossFit again. So, it's fine. I got past that too. Uh, it's fine. I got over it. That's so, that yeah, so funny. Yeah, was, you, I knew you fucking knew it would rattle me. So I was like, fucking hell. Man. I just looked at him and watched the thing. Not CrossFit straight the away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, fuck, I'm fucking. So okay. I, you basically commented twice something about can't remember it was just something about I, I think you said that you used to respect you or something i was like that got me <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah like fuck you oh you yeah. bastard yeah so, so so then but then i thought about right why did i actually do that because it's the same with um so i don't know if you've seen this eddie abby you'll definitely have seen him oh the um, with the, and he was beefing james uh, smith and metal, that, uh, metal right anyway so i think that if people and you were to explain who today, he is by the way because people might so he's a bodybuilder ex bodybuilder i think he was an olymp he was a, done the olympia at some point like he was ridiculously in shape but his views are so far 
to one side that he demonizes everything. So he says, all you should eat is avocados, eggs, like a hugely high fat diet, blah, blah, blah. Like, and that's what will be the be all and end all. But then he always says this research, this science, but he never points to any specific studies anywhere that exist for anything. And I'm all for people that want to have an opinion, but then don't prefix it with, and it's a very common thing. And I've seen it lately with the studies and the research, but then you ask, and they don't back it up. Whereas people who say, he does this thing and this is what I think, and then just stop there. Cool, completely get it. People go, yeah, all of the science and all of the studies, I'm like, you're speaking nonsense, it's bullshit. And so like, I've done a couple of things because he called out a doctor so that, that I've done a video on Which it. Which one? Dr. Ids. I think. Uh, I've spoke to him a lot oh, of times. Me crazy, and him started crazy. TikTok at the same time. Right, he's, right, right. he's massive now, he's obviously, a, he's, but he's a smart cookie as well. Uh, like. Some of the stuff he like, I like him, right? I but bet, some sometimes he comes well. out with some stuff, and I'm like, that's not right. You've you've used a paper, but that's a very unhelpful yeah, thing yeah, you've yeah. just said. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? That's there's, that's there's what I also that. don't always like about just po pointing to studies. Because I also yeah. go, but where is that applicable to the average yeah. human? Yeah, and I yeah. and I borderline think, as a doctor, surely it should all be applicable to like a so, a, a normal. Yeah. If you if you're helping someone in a medical and lifestyle sense, I'm like, so how does that apply to the average person? Yeah, yeah, agreed. So, but but his his stuff. He's still. This is the guy that stands in a supermarket and shouts, "This is all. This is all shit." And I just, I hate it so much. So for somebody like him. I feel like he has an obligation. And this was a comment I made to you and you clearly responded to it in a way, oh, come on the podcast and we'll chat. Whereas he just will not respond to anybody apart from somebody that's clickbait. And so I think like it's important for people like you or for like me or like anybody who has any type of following, if they're going to say something to be able to go, well, I'm going to back up why I say that thing. And like, I think other people, because it's so confusing. Imagine if somebody comes into the space now, you're out of shape and you meet, say you get his content, so Eddie's content, and you get yours. And you go, right, these two people are in these two echo chambers. They decide which one of those they want based on essentially who shouts the loudest or who they can resonate with. And if that's him, I feel like that's dog shit. Like that personal opinion, whatever, but I feel like it's going to breed such unhealthy habits and so on and so forth. But at least if he was willing to have a conversation with you, somebody like you, and say, right, well, let's chat about it and knock it out, people would see that they are just two different viewpoints, although they align to the same thing. And that's what kind of annoys me about it. It's like everybody's just living in that realm now where they just want to shout about the clickbaity thing and the clickbaity thing. And I think it went at me where I was like, I feel like we should talk about this openly. You know what I mean? Because that's good for people to see, but you don't see any of it. You just see this person post their stuff and their stuff and their stuff. And nobody really like collabs from completely different viewpoints. Because I really want to make, well, I know that I'm such a small fish and everybody will make a difference, but if you keep saying that by the way but if you look at your instagram you'll get almost the same i i loved when you were saying that you were like you've got this but i mean my tiktok is dead it's massive though right it's but huge. it's dead on its arse like i'm not i'm not like this some fucking g-list celebrity i'm definitely uh, not um so that's why i was like that, that, that's, I, so that's definitely a perception thing right because when you see it and that's one of the mass things where you go like that following's fucking massive yeah. but then again that was all from lockdown but the first one uh, and I, that's what i was saying as well like my messaging has changed changed so much because all i spoke about at this start was like food right, and like right, right, calories right. and stuff and it was purely because i was too insecure to put up stuff about lifting because i also wasn't that strong at the time yeah. my form wasn't the best because i just started and i knew but i knew that i had to i'd done like right. a year and a half of like strict powerlifting yeah and like a 531 program I got to like a 200 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um so so i knew what i was talking about that yeah, way as yeah. well makes sense. I'll, i like i've got insecurities as well but yeah. i'll always like know what i need to well, work on I, I think it's i think it's hard especially for i say like normal people like us in this space right that just look in normal clothes like normal guys you know what i mean no walking with tiny t-shirts oh, yeah, 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 I mean. <laughs> like i've been every different shape that exists but Same. like you wouldn't see us and you wouldn't think it's like you know those guys are huge because whatever gear is a completely separate conversation i'm not really bothered about that but it's like people who were born looking like that and i always find things that i've known so for a perfect example of this so high rocks i hate running right but i've got two high rocks booked at the start of next year because i've had clients saying to me Right, I want Where is to, this high rocks came out oh, of, by mental, the way? What it's, is it's Dale's on about training for it as well? He's, so I've seen mental. him. I mean, he's, he's been doing like so, strong man for ages. Now I've seen him like just running on so the treadmill I have and stuff. A, I have a theory, right? And and I'll get bashed by every every high rocks person that was there. So there's there's a guy that takes a high rocks class at my gym as well, and he's the guy who I'm doing it with. I thought, how like, far away how far removed is that from CrossFit as so well? So that's what I'm gonna get on to. What it does is it includes running. So a lot of the time runners will get 
border running, they'll take up CrossFit, right? All it is, is a long CrossFit workout. CrossFit at its core is functional movement performed at high intensity or specifically constantly varied functional movement performed at high intensity. All that is, is a long CrossFit workout, but it takes out the, most of the strength element and all of the skill element, which are the two bits that piss everybody off that make them not good. That's the separate. Because to be good at CrossFit, you probably need five years of like lifting, squat, and deadlifting. And, yeah, yeah, so even if I'm unfit and no strength, But you need, a, you need the strength, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah, so, so, so you need that, but even if I lose a bit of my strength and I, and I lose all of my fitness, I'll still beat the majority of people in CrossFit workouts. Because of the skill set. The skill. And it's just like the, the brain power, the capacity, the things that go along with it. So what Hyrox does is you can take away the skill element and you can take away this most of the strength element unless you're in the pro category and you can still complete a workout and feel good about it. And that's why people love it because it's piss easy. You can, it's like Tough Mudder, right? It's hard, but it's never impossible. Whereas there are so many things in CrossFit where it is impossible. Just for you, unless you put Like a ring pull up, I can't. I'm just it, not going to be able to exa- do that. Exactly. So it's, it's like that. And that's why I think people love it. And also when runners swap from running, which is... Just, you know, most of the time boring. If that's your only thing, I've never understood it. Like I've done half. I've been running for like three months. Again. It's uh, it's 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 mental. It's mental. If it's a short term thing, I get it. But I've got people who've pals who've run for years and years. It's all I do marathon. It's only if it's only fun if you you get you get better at it. Aye. aye so I, I like I I will not I cannot like just run for fitness. I have to like I've got a sub nineteen goal aye, for a five k. Right, 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 if I you if have I, a sub twenty at some point. Sub, I've done sub twenty like three years ago. Nah. Um, if I don't do a sub nineteen, like I'll I'll find it pointless and I'll quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. otherwise, what am I doing? Just running about my scheme. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just got this image. Now. Just, I don't know what your scheme was. I imagine it be like this. Uh, the no, I don't run around here. This is mate. Is this I, I done here? one. Si- I done a sixteen k around the Airdrie. Every street has a hill, so I, was, I don't run. Oh here yeah, anymore. I think I think I, I remember. Yeah, if you see my Strava, it's just me running one down one street back, and go down another. Yeah, back, yeah, like yeah. yeah. Right. There's a couple of people have said that to me recently, where they go running everywhere's hills, mm-hmm. so they just run around in a little park. Mm-hmm. But I think that's why you get everybody like in. Uh, like Glasgow Green or whatever, it's just that one bit, and it's just. I've started three, running around Glasgow Green. Exactly, now. 300 runners just in. Like, <laughs> what? Why is this? This is the least exciting. No, like oh, right, I get it. Fucking yeah. scudded by a BMW two days ago. Did you? Like next to Glasgow Green, I just I shouldn't have ran across the road, but he also shouldn't have been going 30 miles per oh, hour over the speed not. limit. So no. We're both wrong, but he was more wrong than me, yeah, and I shat myself. Well, he was. If he hit you, you would die, but he'd be fine. <laughs> I also who would be. But is he in the wrong? Oh, 100%. Oh, good He's stuff. the one in the vehicle. You know, he might do a bit of damage, but you know, Greg. Have you seen these quads? I know, actually. They're, they're, they're hey, wait, probably like. I don't know what Tim over. Yeah, <laughs> fucking totaled the car like a deer. Straight into the Clyde. Ah, yeah, like a baby. <laughs> deer. The BM. Uh, like um, so, I, um, the But going back to that mental mental health point, right? Because that's been my biggest thing kind of uh, <laughs> lately. So, I, so I never talk about it because I think there's a lot of that lately where it's like the the woe is me thing because it goes back to the clickbait this is a good chat because i'm we'll agree on loads and i'll agree with you here. yeah yeah so like i could have and i've never talked about that publicly so i got diagnosed when i was like well first of all when i was like 18 coming out my gothish phase and i was just like you know bullied at high school whatever like none of that matters but then like i knew that someone was a bit off because some people would be sad and a bit sad and i was like much more sad and then people would be would get like a bit excited and i'd get much more excited so like obsessed like obsessed like that thing i talked about before where i do one thing and get obsessed and blah, blah, blah. i thought right someone someone's going on here then i'd be with girls and whatever else and then i'd be ruining relationships and i'd be like like what the fuck is going ruining on ruining relationships in what sense just being obsessed with stuff i'd be like even to the point where I was so obsessed with them. Like, so they might, not every time, but occasionally they would be the obsession point. It's all we care about. And then and then to the opposite point, I just wouldn't give a fuck about them. And it could be person to person. I didn't care. And I'd ruin like family relationships, friend relationships, just no bothered because I was either here or I was here. And and I thought like, oh, that's just a cycle of what happens. I went to the doctor, they go, oh, you're depressed. You've got anxiety. Here's some beta blockers and whatever else. Didn't they make a difference? Oh, it done was. Well, was that sexually? Uh, no, nah, first of all, it was fluoxetine back in the day. Then went through like multiple different things, um, like loads of different. I can't even remember. For the anxiety sense. or depression? For both, they tried for both. Did you feel like, like you had anxiety? Nah, that was mad. Point. How they just? Nah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was explaining that the high wasn't like an anxious high. It was like I feel like I'm sniffing loads of gear. Like that was what it felt like. Yeah. And, and they couldn't explain it. And even since then, even if it happens now, like I could know that I've got a full wage in the bank. I've just been paid it. I've got food and everything today, but I could spend it all on something tomorrow. And then two days later, be like, oh, I'm fucked. 
that makes no sense. I'm an adult, <laughs> you know, like that. That's it's no thing. So that went on for a couple of years and then went private. Uh, private healthcare and then they did like they did a brain scan and then they did like all these tests they got me to see all these different things and then they event eventually said it's a specific type of bipolar that can be treated with anti-seizure medication so that's what i take so that's like i take twice a day 200 milligrams which is quite a lot um is that to stop manic out. episodes then it stops both so like essentially what happens with mine is it's like brain activity if you imagine like a seizure brain activity it like spikes or it dips and so mine's that's what happens it's the downward part and the upward part so it stops it's meant to stop that that brain activity mm. happening but like it doesn't stop it completely and sometimes so these will still happen so i can still have big phases of extreme depression like especially when i was younger there was like some really scary times with lo like life attempts and stuff and i never talk about it but then like I just feel like a lot of people, and I see it all the time and I get so angry and it winds me up a lot because people go, oh, this thing happened to me and this is why you should buy into my thing. And I'm like sitting there going, fuck you. Like my thing's so much worse than your thing, but that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? And so I thought it was important, like, cause I feel like I've achieved, I hate that shit, but I feel like I've achieved a lot in the past couple of years. And locally people see that with like my competition and like I've, I've pushed the gym so much and all this kind of stuff. And I, I like try to say to people, like, it's actually fine for you to have stuff going on. Then he use it as an excuse to mug everything else off. Just like, use it, find a way to navigate it, whether that is medication, whether that is, you know what I mean? And I've had like family members have suffered big style with it. Like one of them was sectioned and so on. So I've been exposed to it for a long time. Um, and it's played a huge part in my life. I nearly life. got my mum sectioned. What's what? I nearly got my mum sectioned. Oh, did you? Yeah, I half contemplate still doing it. She, she's definitely, it's hard to, cause, all the all the different mental health because she's got a disorder right yeah, she's yeah. not depressed or anxious yeah, yeah. she has some sort of disorder so she has like i i think it's schizophrenia right, yeah. i'm almost sure it is out like all all of the symptoms lead to that and she's had like psych psychotic episodes and stuff and i nearly got her sectioned a few times but i don't even know how you really go about doing it and my family were against me doing it yeah, yeah. and i was like yeah, I'm an only child as well. My dad's been broken up with for like 25 years, so right, right, nobody right. actually knows what it's like. Right, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's infuriating yeah, sure. being told it, yeah. how you should react to it. I'm like, yeah. I, but you don't deal with it. Yeah. I deal with it all on my own. Uh, it's rough. It's rough. And like, I've seen it with people with me. Like, it's, it's exactly the same as the position you're in. But like, again, to, to play on, on her side as well, it's hard for her to see like that it's how much it's affecting you, which is the same for me. Like, She I, doesn't know she hasn't. Aye, aye, well, I've sat, I've sat, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one thing that got Which me over it is because I've sat her down and literally said to her, like that was after like five years I went, look, you have something here. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, something. Yeah. And she was like, you don't understand what goes on in my head. And I was like, no, I don't. But that's what I'm talking about. It's and I was like, brain. it's not, not, it's like, it's a disorder. And then she went like that. I've got ADHD. And I was like, okay cool right i was like yeah, cool yeah, okay yeah, that's yeah, it right you've got adhd that's fine right i'll just leave it there yeah, yeah. obviously i didn't actually slap myself in the face but yeah that was a three hours of like intense like try to get her to go get it treated yeah. and she won't yeah the adhd thing lately has, has got me lately like oh it's uh, infuriating why is it people i put thing? up a thing saying because i'm very like especially my podcast you'll hear that i'm a my my brain's a wee bit erratic i'll go from conversation well, same as me i'll jump about like the watch, wheel, it doesn't make sense so right. we'll both do that and we'll aye, go from aye, thing aye. to thing and i can be quite obsessive and stuff with things i can also like i can't sit in a classroom environment it just doesn't yeah. work for me i'll fall asleep i fell asleep all the way through school i'd never been in that environment again and then i worked in a call center and tried to teach us stuff and i fell asleep every time yeah. but people i was like just put up a poll just to see what people would say I was like, do people think I've got ADHD? And I had like maybe like 50 people, like all tip, half of them saying I did, half of them saying I didn't, half, and they were all saying I work with people with ADHD. And I'm like, also, none of you have met me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. you are all fucking talking uh, shit. It's, well, it's become a, it's become a, a trend, uh, which is fucking mind blowing. Mm. I, I don't I, think I have it. I don't uh, think yeah, I have yeah, it at yeah. all. I've got quirks and stuff and I'm, maybe uh, i'm a wee bit in a spectrum but I, i'm nowhere near needing medicated yeah, or anything yeah, like yeah. i'm fine but I, th I think like it's all that you could you could argue that anybody that sits on tiktok's got it based mm. on the symptoms anybody that does this and can't pay attention to something for a whole video you could arguably say that they all have but whereas now i feel like for the people who are genuinely suffering with it as a thing it's fucking up for them like and that that's a massive thing for me i feel like the whole kind of 
current culture. It's like people fidget and they're like, like I've got ADHD. Exactly. And I'm like, oh. Shut up, man. Like, you don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so there's a lot of that. That's pissed me off lately. A lot, a lot right, tell me more about then getting diagnosed and what it actually looks like. So, so yeah, so the, the diagnosis, the, the most annoying thing about that whole thing for me was I knew there was something up. And for some reason in my brain, I thought when they tell me what's wrong, I'll be like, that's it. Like it'll fix all things. Everything. I'll 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 be able to have uh, my bird will be fine. Like my family will be amazing. I'll make great pals. I'll make loads of money. I'll have a job and all that. And they're like, right, we've decided after all this time, this is the thing. This is the, what you've got. And I was like, oh fucking here we go again. Then they medicated for it, and it solved the majority of the problems. So I was like, right, that's probably a sensible thing. And then I sat. I remember it very specifically because I went to start this supplement company that I had, and I, and I was like, right, I'm cured. Let's go. And I was like, nothing's fucking different. Like nothing's different at all. So apart from the fact that I felt a wee bit better, it changed nothing. And I, then I then I ended up really- What did really, you want it to change? Who knows? I wanted it to, for me to be better with people because I can be relatively socially anxious before the last few years. At that time, I was super socially anxious because uh, as I talked about all the thoughts about taking my own life in that, prior to that, I thought it'll fix all that. I thought like it'll make everything go away. If something bad happens in my life, I can just go past it. And I just had this- thing in my in my brain where i thought once they say that's what's wrong with you cool i've now got essentially an excuse for everything and i thought right now whatever happens i can go haha it's because of that and actually it went in the complete opposite way where i was like this is an excuse for fuck all most of these things that i did like about myself are character traits i was like they're not because of that condition which was such a huge i'm just a cunt i'm okay. just a knob <laughs> half the time i and, and and i'd used it up to that point as an excuse to be a knob half the time realistically i had like when i thought about like sabotaging relationships and stuff i just thought i can get away with this because i know i've got something wrong with me and when they finally tell me what's wrong with me i can use it as an excuse and it really did the complete opposite for me it flipped it on its head where i was like right okay, I've got a lot of development today. I can now do it in a clear headspace where I know what's wrong and I'm medicated and blah, blah, blah. And that, you know, that's been the last maybe six or seven years, maybe, or just over seven years. So just before I got my current blood, so it'd be seven, seven and a half years-ish. Like that's me being, I've done the opposite. I've talked about none of it, which is ironic because I used to talk about there's been something wrong with me all the time until I finally said, oh, there is something wrong with you. And I'm like, Oh, well, I'm just not going to talk about it now. And it, it was the complete opposite way where I would have seen it panning out. You know Is that because I mean? you don't know how to get the right message across with it yet? I think so. Because I do think there is, there's definitely a good message you can, yeah. you can like show people I, with that. Cool. It's just really difficult. And yeah. it's such a, it's a crazy message to navigate just now as well, I, because people are just going to get offended at anything. Yeah, that's, and it's that's really true. hard to talk about. Um, <coughs> I have really drank too much liquid. I'm just going to run out of it. I definitely, it's like, it's a weird feeling. I think it's a strange feeling. It's not like coffee. No, nah, nothing like that. It's, a, it's as if there's, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's strange though, isn't it? It reminds me of um, beta alanine, but without the tingles, it's like that. I've it's never, so is that beta alanine and like pre-workout and stuff? Ah, I've never stuff, touched pre-workout. I see, I have. It's terrible. Like I had like people in my gym were like I think they'd stuff that I can't remember what it was called, but you couldn't get it in shops. I think it was borderline illegal and they would take like a full scoop of it and I'd be like they'd be like, Do you want to try it? And I would only try like a quarter scoop, mate. I'd be like Was was this back in the day or is No, this like recently? a year and a half ago or so, something and I would be like, Mate, I'm so, not touching that and then they would be charging across the gym and I'd be like, yeah. mate, you, you look like you're on gear, like what's you the ever point? Hear a jack three D? That's what it was. Right. That's what it is. Exactly yeah. what it was. So back in the day when when I was fighting, that they was, were getting uh, that off the black market. Yeah, so that's because it's literally full of amphetamines. But when it was legal, or it was just part, yeah. When it was when it class. was yeah, class. When it was marketed as a, uh, I think that there was a second formula that was less illegal. But when it was marketed as a real pre-workout, we were just smashing it all the time. Just like unreal. We came back from. By the way, I'm just going to throw this in anyway. But we came back from the toilet, and that's how we've started talking about some other oh, yeah. rather other <laughs> random <laughs> subject. But tell me more, what? Uh, yeah, so it was full of full to tits and amphetamines, and we were taking it when we were fighting, and we were just having it all the time. But and then you're like, it was legal, but you're like, ah, of course, I was taking it all the time. It was f literally full of amphetamines. My, <laughs> mental, what? my first experience with drugs, really at all, I took maybe like a bump of someone's. Kia Coke and hadn't felt anything because I had 10 pints, but I was in Cambodia and we were at a rave in a jungle. 
Unreal. And I was with two of my mates from Dublin, and the other one was the same as me, didn't touch anything. The other one would loved Mandy, and we got there within three minutes. I seen his jaw swing, and I was like, How? Yeah, yeah like yeah, we've yeah, been yeah. here for three yeah. minutes. How have you Managed got that. got MDMA, yeah, yeah. took it, and also <laughs> came up and, 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 away. Time, yeah. and then we were standing outside the toilet, and then my other mate, he was just like, just started getting all excited, and he was like, I was like, what have you done? And he was like, just took speed off that guy. Like, oh, for fuck's sake. And I was like, yeah. where is he? <laughs> and then I took speed. And then worst two days of my life after it, that you just can't sleep or anything like that. And then my mate would just be like Googling it. He's like, this is a methamphetamine. I was like, I just don't, I know that's a word that I don't, shouldn't, yeah. <laughs> I know I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, yeah. Horrendous. I, I, I tried everything in that time in that, in that chubby phase, I was, I was all over everything. I had time. about two years where I done a wee bit, you know, everything. Uh, kept, just not heroin. Yeah, not heroin. Never uh, had heroin. Bit of ketamine, that, you know. Uh, just a bit of that. I love mushrooms. You know, I used to put them in a sock and then boil water and then make tea. So. I've only done them once. We were thinking about doing a podcast in the gym and being on mushrooms. Unreal. But the mushrooms I took. See, when people are talking about like microdosing and having all of these different experiences i was just fried yeah so was i i know i just all the time i just used to watch like i remember i stopped because there was three guys sitting on the sofa opposite me like this sounds like a bullshit story and it's, you know i had one of those you know the big i think they're called cuddle chairs big fucking stupid circle things and they spin how do you know they even at the other side i had this big sofa and it was three of my pals sitting on it we had this mushroom tea and i remember that the sofa just went up and spoiled them and they disappeared <laughs> they were gone and i sat there for what felt like hours in my head going they've just fucked off <laughs> And I was like, and then after I recognised what had happened, I kind of shook and they came back again. I was like, I'm never doing that again in my life. Yeah. And then I never did. So. I never had a bad trip on. I just got stuck in the fridge for like an hour. <laughs> stuck in uh, the fridge. Yeah, I got nauseous and hungry and I just, everyone, everyone was outside in the garden. I went, I'm going to go into the fridge and I got in the fridge and I was like, woo! Oh, I, I, stuck, I, I had a much I had a much better vision in my head. I thought you meant, you know, like, oh, the, I just, like, like I, I, no, in, in, even, you know, even I thought you meant, you know, the honey I shrunk the kids, but you ended up oh. this size and you were just in the fridge <laughs> knocking. Just licked to the milk. I I'm like, to the milk. Yeah. I'm for hours. I had fucking baby bells in that. No, well, I just yeah. couldn't get out because the it was dark in the room, so the fridge was bright. So it was like oh, a whole right, experience right, right. Yeah. opening the fridge. It was like unreal. My yeah. um but let's get back on to uh, this chat, I feel like this chat's been very erratic. Yeah, that was very um, Get back up. So see when, because I think we started on it from you saying, you were you going through anything when you commented on that? Is that what you were getting at? Aye, yeah. So so I have these phases where like, I think that someone becomes super important and then like, it sounds stupid to talk about, but then, so say at that point, something becomes super important. So then us having a conversation about that, that's, I decide that that's the most important thing at that time. And so like when people see it and they go, why would you call some dude on social media? That's a character for me. It's not mm-hmm. something I would do. But in my head, I think- Because right, you're not getting any other videos. I just, really don't, I just don't do it. You know, it, it's, it's not a thing of mine. And so then in that time, I'm like, right, what can I do to make this thing that I need to happen, happen? And it's like, right, well, I need to get my opinion across right now and I need to make it happen right now. And I talk about this quite a lot and I've talked about loads and loads of times where like learning to manage what I've got going on, it can work really well. Because if I have like a manic episode, for example, I'm bringing out an app. And so like, that was where I talked about helping loads of people. And so if I can put them into one place, and so I stayed up for like, I don't know, however many days, just creating this thing. And now as a result of that, I now have this thing that would have normally taken me weeks and it's just taken me a few days and that's learning to work with it. But that was exactly like that time where I commented and I don't know I'm in it until after it's happened. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Sometimes, oh, you have no idea that you're going nah, for a manic nah, nah. episode? Sometimes or? it's good, sometimes it's bad. But I just, normally, I think I'm just being super productive. And sometimes it can be the opposite, <laughs> uh, which which can be tough. But it just, you, you learn to manage it. How did you, because we had a conversation in DMs. By the way, I've learned to navigate these. So I just don't, I don't feel there's anything to gain from call out culture yeah, and yeah, I yeah. don't really feel like there's anything to gain even like if we were what how would you say his name Eddie Ab Eddie Ab yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. even think there's that much to gain calling him out yeah, yeah. but the problem is how do you get views and also it's like how do you yeah. do it how do you get yeah, views and be sound that's the thing and get into and like prove the right message yeah. without slagging the odd thing off and I've been trying to find that balance for ages yeah. but what i was just trying to say to you was like i don't feel like we should argue about it because yeah, yeah, yeah. and also i didn't ask you in the podcast straight away i don't think yeah, no, i was no, like i, would, I, would a couple of I was like uh because i said i'm gonna go i'm gonna go hard on podcasting i think yeah, and yeah, just yeah. do 
like one a week and just try to get different people on and post clips of that because i think that's what's going to get my message across more the because long, the longer form stuff like i, I i'm coming across that because it's hard so I, every video of mine will be one minute 29.5 seconds because i'm milking as much as i'm allowed out of the shorter form version of the content because you put so say if you post longer than 129 now you can still post it as a reel though I uh, but I, I, like you read millions of different things and you just decide which one is the the correct. Oh, no, but I've just been doing that because I don't care about how it yeah, does now. Yeah, I just yeah, want to like yeah. I'm speaking about a message until I feel like I've yeah, took yeah, it, like yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. care. I posted a five minute reel the other day and I was like, fuck it, uh, if it does shit, I don't care. Uh, I've done I've done a couple where and then I'm like, oh, fuck, I really want this to do well, and I feel like because on the shorter ones I've, I'm trying to squeeze as much as I can in, and that's why I cut out all the pauses. It's properly rapid because I'm trying to squeeze as much into that tiny time frame as I can, and then I've thought. When I had my YouTube channel, maybe I'll, I'm the same with this because, like, it takes me a long time to explain the stuff I'm talking about in detail. And people can also, even if I've got the best will in the world of giving out a decent message, somebody could pick it up shit exactly like what happened in your scenario where I read it a different way from the way that you'd intended it to be. It's exactly I also like probably that. didn't put the message out the way I wanted but, it as well. But, but, you wouldn't but be it's also one video. I so it's like, exactly. I would like 200 videos, I'm going to fucking say something yeah, that's yeah, maybe yeah. not the way I wanted to say it. Yeah, I mean, so the classic example, I mean, he's a fucking knob, but that Andrew Tate scenario, you watched the documentary on him? No, but I was, it's funny you say that. Piers Morgan just done another yeah, interview with yeah, him. Yeah, I yeah. watched 20 minutes of it this morning, mate. It's one of the funniest things I've ever it's watched. It's honestly, amazing. Cartoon he said, characters, man. They're cartoon <laughs> characters. Eh? He went... Piers Morgan was trying to get him to basically say he was in a he was in that Romanian jail for yeah, like ninety yeah, days. Yeah. He had like eleven days on his own at one point, and uh, he was trying to get him to basically say, "Did you did you cry?" And he was like, "I was doing. I had a mission. I was I was missing people. I was sad, and like I was doing a, a, a hundred push ups or yeah, whatever." Yeah, and then nonsense. he was like, "A tear may have went down my face, but I did not cry." And Piers Morgan was like, "That's crying." He was like, "You interpret it." Your way when I interpret it my way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what from me, uh, uh, me crying? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, so I know, I know, I know, I know. But but he he puts it across that, and actually his is a, it's a shit example to be honest. I don't even know why the fuck I'm talking about. It. But he says that he had hours and hours and hours of long form content, and actually some of it in it the message is all right. Younger guys should learn to be a bit harder, and they should you know I, there's a, there's a lot in it that's all right. But obviously he's a misogynistic knob end. <laughs> but what happened was you were on two sides of TikTok, and there was a huge video I watched of this, and it was actually quite interesting. So the media wanted you to hate him and if you were on the side that didn't want you to like him it was tiny form content that was made by people that didn't like him and then on the other side it was like this wholesome message of like you know if you're a younger guy that wants confidence that wants to go with females that wants to make a lot of money and the other side was just tiny little clips of him like basically being a traffic like human trafficker being a misogynist being this being that and it was like you could see how easy it was just to paint he was a disgusting human being but how you could paint him to be like that just like that you know what i mean just with short form content so so easy so hard to know what's actually the truth because if i listen to him an hour and a half i just find him hilarious and i don't <laughs> actually a cartoon character. I, a I don't i'm like i don't even think he's a real person no, I know, I do you know, know what i mean yeah 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 and i actually I do that. laugh and then the other time he says something i'm like kind of agree with that and then he says something ridiculous and i'm just like <laughs> surely no one <laughs> yeah. actually takes so, that as so advice that, 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 <laughs> that's what that, i'm like that's surely why, that, that that's why i quite not. i quite liked them at the start i kind of say i didn't I? and because i thought all that stuff was just a character i but then it turns out obviously he goes to jail and it's probably not a character he's like ah the matrix is out to get me and all that I just thought there aren't people that are going class. And then you see like... The no, but you meet people I've yeah, met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That are fucking brainwashed. I had a him. wee bit uh, like when it first started coming out, there was a few people that I met that were... Because you don't really hear about people that are following and stuff. And yeah, like, yeah, I met yeah, uh, yeah, the odd yeah. person that was in his mad university and stuff. And I would just... I've got... that. This is how my brain works. I just want to know why people do stuff. <laughs> so I will... And I, that's probably why I'm quite good at coaching because I don't... People... People are like, oh, I feel anxious in the gym and I like will dig find deep until why, I find yeah, out yeah. actually why so I can work on that. Yeah. So I'll that's my brain is wired to do that without yeah. even someone asking me to. I'll be like, What is it you actually like about it? and they'll tell me X, Y, Z and I would always get to the and I would be where I wanted the journey to go. I was like, When did you break up with someone? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I would yeah. always get to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll be like they'd be like, Oh, did she cheated on me? And I'm like, Great, I get it. I yeah, get it. And I was like, that yeah, makes yeah. sense because I've been there, not been cheated on, but I've been 
through horrendous breaks, breakups. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I found myself on wee dark sides of YouTube where it's a wee bit misogynistic Ropey. guys yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Ah, um, and that. you could easily fall down that trap. If you don't yeah. work on yourself, oh, yeah, yeah, you could yeah. easily, and I'm like, right, I get it. And I don't hate you for it. Yeah. I understand why you fell into that yeah. trap. But oh, he also knows that trap. He knows he's playing it. Yeah. And I don't think he even believes what he says himself. Nah, nah, he can't, he can't. I've watched some of it, like his longer form stuff. Like I listened to the original interview with him and Piers, like his actual speech when he first came out of jail. Like, cause I was just very interested by this guy. Cause I'm like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, what, what the is fuck? this? What the fuck is this? Uh, and then he's got this brother that's like a fucking, Honestly, it's mental. I, I can't understand it. But then again, you see how just that, like the internet just made him a hang. And you're like, I don't know how that's allowed to happen. Like somebody mm. like that can just be, but then again, it's the two sides of it. He's got one side where you could paint him to be this amazing, ridiculous guy, or he could paint him to be the worst guy in the universe. Short form content split from his long term, long form content could make him either way. And it's, it's mad. It's getting harder and harder now as well. This is why it's because it's spreading into like politics and stuff obviously yeah, yeah. and that's why I, I really try my best to get away from any of this because yeah. it's like that see the israel palestine stuff just because i do listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff i'm just like i don't know what is going on over there yeah yeah i have no scooby i have no idea yeah. and like i'm all these people that i know sharing the pro-palestine stuff and then the other people that are maybe jewish sharing yeah, i'm like yeah. i don't know that's i it, really don't know it falls into the fitness side too though you and and, and I, that, that's what annoys me because you go through one and for that you're using that perfect example you go from one pro palestine you scroll to the next video and it's completely pro you and that's it and you're like i don't fucking know what i'm supposed to yeah. like there's not like a, a credibility thing on fucking anything it doesn't matter like and, and i'm all like can i say hamas are the bad guys am i allowed to say that well, I, I, I don't know who knows i watched one that says no matter what side you support you're a racist and I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm fucked then. I'm racist. <laughs> I'm racist then, I suppose. Or I'll just pretend it doesn't exist, which is probably just as bad. Like, it's fuck. Oh, it's, it's wild. Because you, uh, you're never... The only way that you can get people to sort of understand things is, like, you need to educate them on human nature. Because yeah. you're like, <coughs> right, if you believe something, you've been taught something, you need to understand that not everything you've ever been taught is right. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. need to be able to take a bird's eye view that your emotions might be attached to that, which is very, very difficult yeah. to do. Aye, 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 100%. Um, it's, just, it's just hard. And I think that socials just make it so difficult as well. And I think, again, at that time when I commented, it's only been a short time since then. But like, I was like, actually, I want to do as many things. Oh, I need to have a bigger following because it will net me this and blah, blah, blah. And actually then, since then, I've kind of doubled down more locally and so like i run the charity lifting comp i did at the weekend and then i had like the brownies in last night to do kids classes and actually i think i can do a bigger a more of an impact there when i'm talking about what i want to do for wider people in that smaller area so since then i was caught up in the get more exposure chat about stuff on a bigger platform and stuff and i'm like actually it's too much of a minefield for me and i can't be fucked with it i would rather just do that sort of stuff because i can do more so funny thing is i'm the exact same uh, and i probably have changed since that conversation about yeah, if you go yeah. watch my videos i probably have uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a lot less well that's with the free sessions and stuff because that, that free i've sessions... done a free session before yeah, you came yeah, in yeah yeah just with two people and i've had a few people that are like um how much is the coaching and stuff and i'm like i don't care if you come on my coaching yeah, yeah, i've probably yeah. got like three people i can take on max i don't care if you come on because yeah, yeah. i'm doing more that's you slagged my free plan off as well yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. but i'm doing more of them so i have just a beginner and an intermediate and an advanced one and that's not like an advanced as in what me and you would call advanced yeah, it's like yeah. just so that they build in it and it's pretty much just imagine like a dumbbell remaining deadlift then barbell then a conventional I deadlift think to, to, be, to be honest call it shit because i never knew really like because when you see you uh, and i know you go it doesn't matter 270k followers whatever when you look at it you put you on I would put you in the same realm as, as anybody else like that. It's in that same realm. And so when you see what they do, and I know that there's so many of them are bullshit, you just get grouped up with them. Followers regarding that kind yeah. of about you. And then I get wrapped up in that. And then that's that's exactly what it is. I go, well, you must be the same. And actually you come here and then you go, ah, oh, free sessions. There's a gym here that you, there's a private gym that you go out of. And then a free plan makes sense because it's probably for people that you want to work with rather than just everybody as a scam to make cash to get them into coaching. And so it's easy to get wrapped up in that. And again, that's just a, a no, even something that you've done. It's just yeah. something that, the way other people come across that you get wrapped up in them you know what i mean so that's yeah. why that's why that is so then even since then like i started my free 
I fucking hate the word transformation because we, we can get on transformation pictures because I did them either. As you'll notice, I've never posted one on my thing either. Um, but then I started this 12-week transformation group. It's got like 40 odd people in it. No transformations at all. It's just me saying, here's how you can help. Here's a little job form for you to fill in some accountability and they all help each other in chat. And that's like, cost, I make nothing from it. Cost me nothing. Couldn't give a fuck. But it helps that bunch of people. And actually, for me, I get much more out of that than I do out of- And also, that. by the way, it is without you even being a dick at free marketing for yourself. Yeah. It's I, not I, even like, because those two people that came in today, like- the, what I I reckon one of them might come on coaching, but I never even put, pitched it yeah. to them. I think I think what's what's interesting for me is I've with so mine's is all remote really, apart for the CrossFit classes, which is classes. So like one to one, with, I've decided I don't like that in person. Really, it's not for me. And so I'm in the unique position where I make money from a normal job, so I'm not chasing money. So I can be very picky with clients. And actually, the last little while, I've tried it before. I've tried to take on people just for the sake of it, and it was shit. I was like, I'm providing them like. I don't know, you'd have older women that come on with me and say, I want to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, I get no enjoyment from this. You're not getting as much as you could be from just coming to a class. And so now the last little while, I've built up more clients one-to-one -one online than I ever have. But I've said no to more in the last three months than I have in my entire time as a coach ever. And that's that was such a thing for me where I was like, right, I'm going to swap this over. And I'm going to really only work with people that I specifically want to and that I can really help, which I think is a lot of your message. Like you only want to work with people that, you know you can help whereas yeah. i think a lot of people and i was caught up in this as well take on as many people as i possibly can and that's where i did like fucking i had a health group where it was 20 quid a month and i was doing a check-in with every one of them every week like a, a full-blown check-in mm. with them there's like fucking 30 odd people on it and it was 20 quid like mate i was running myself into the ground just for for that and i was like what's the fucking point yeah you know what i mean and um, you just get wrapped up in that well the more clients the better Nah, no, really. Even from from money, from every standpoint, it's not that way. It's the opposite. I started getting really, really specific this year, and not it's not in a niche and down sense. Yeah. Um, because I don't really buy, and there's a lot of coaches that will have only work with like thirty, forty yeah, year old, yeah, like nah, like so. professionals. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, like, oh, all people that can, only nah, people nah. that have money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. I love that. Oh, I, I want to. I just want to be with you know high market CEOs that are fucking. And you're yeah. like, yeah, people who can fucking pay. So you, you can charge months. them fifteen hundred quid like, I, for fuck all. Man, no, I um, for, for a chat GPT spreadsheet. So. Exactly. But the way I was thinking about it was, I want to get people because when I first started, I get people going. I need to go to the gym can I not just like walk and track food and I was yeah, like that's yeah. as a coach that is absolutely mind numbing to just get someone to send me their food every day and yeah, I don't yeah, want to do that yeah, I don't yeah. look at my clients food diaries and stuff yeah, yeah. I'll get them to send me every now and then so I can have that's help exactly, that's exactly but I, I deliberately they were like can you not just add me and look at it I was like I don't want you to think that I'm going to go and look at your diary because then you're going to think do, should yeah, I track yeah, this yeah. or not you're going to have guilt but, oh he's gonna see this yeah. and uh, do you know why i learned that because one time i had ice cream at nine o'clock in the morning and i had my food diary in public and one of my clients seen it and i was like, <laughs> 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 I like switched off yeah, and i was like nice great that's it done put all your diaries on private yeah, and yeah, mine's yeah. just getting on private uh, yeah, you're not yeah, seeing yeah, what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. um but the way i think about it now is and I think too deeply about things. I, I'm aware I do this, but I think far too much about well, like same, what same my whole message yeah. is and like what people are actually deciphering when yeah. they watch it. That's why it probably helped when you yeah, said that yeah, stuff yeah. to me. Um, and it just took me to get over the emotional distress. And then, <laughs> and I got over it as well with CrossFit um, Camp. It's fine. So. And then, so what I try to think about is I'll still get the same type of clients. I'll still get people that are maybe ex slim and world or have tried all the fads. I'll still, 90% of people that want to get a PT are just naturally going to want to lose weight. You aren't going to get these people that are just going to be like wanting to, all your clients are going to want a deadlift yeah. 150 kilos or 200 or whatever it is. So you're just naturally being a PT, you're going to get people that want to lose weight. But from watching me, whether they wanted to before finding me or not, they are up for lifting. And they've maybe already tried it a bit yeah. and they're just they're well aware that that's what i'm going to get them to do and they want to do that and they already know there's benefits to it whether they've listened to my podcast or yeah. not rather than they just found me from a viral video I about was, food. i was going to say so is your your thing now is that way around so you'll make content based on that like yeah those are the people i yeah that makes sense because that's kind of what i've been doing now as well so it's going right i see how and i think it's because of the net off you know how much based on what you've done you can help those people so for me I can see 
like if I can take someone from A to B and B is a really fantastic place, but if I can take someone from A to A and a half and that's quite shit, I don't want to waste their time and my time when I know that there's an easier option for them. And so that's what this app's about for me. Like, so it's a space where they can, you know, they can do track and there's some free programs on it. It's like, and they can just go on it and self-serve. And so I made this shitty coach roadmap. So thing. you mean, and that's for people to get to A to A and a half? Yeah. And you're yeah, coaching for yeah, A to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. so, so that's the way you have to look at those apps and the community coaching yeah. and all of that bollocks as well. Yeah, so, so but because people really want like, I help with my spin on it because of the content like locally and stuff so they buy into that and so like it provides a tiny little message and service and whatever else and so like i feel like if they're no one for me but i still want to help them in some way i've got this like little stupid roadmap where it's decide how i can help if it is come to the gym which will always be my first one always always if you are within the vicinity come to the gym that's just the way to that's do it. that's what i'm trying to do now yeah. with a local aspect because it's, mu it's much easier and then if not then you can do it if the app can help you do the app and then as a last chance saloon will go one-to-one -one on coaching and i feel like the people who've jumped through the first two and if i can't sell them on the first two that's the people that i can really help on the last one and in that order the the group of people i've got on now i've been happier with that group than i've ever been ever and it's like but it's taken so much shit and taken on so many people and i think that's why when you were talking about on the business mentor thing people see a hundred grand and they go, oh, fucking hell, I need to get as many clients on as possible, blah, blah, blah. And you end up taking on shit and it makes you miserable. Like miserable, miserable. If you don't enjoy it, that's half the battle. You know what I mean? I think it's impossible to like, the only people that are going to understand that message are people that have already oh, yeah. done it to yeah, themselves. Yeah, people, to, everyone's yeah. always still going to be, I bet I need to make more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that type of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's mad that we both took away like, I think that conversation actually helped me a lot and I didn't yeah. even realize it because yeah, yeah, I've sure. focused way more on locally and I don't know about you, but I always have this thing where I'll have a client, a conversation with a client. So I've got one that's a head teacher right now and she's only been on with me for like two weeks. And this is an ego thing where I'm like, out of everyone I've took on in the last six months, she's going to be the hardest client, but not in a sense that she's a difficult person she's a head teacher she works like from nine to like six and then yeah, she says yeah. she goes home and she works two hours more and then she says she works four or five hours yeah. at the weekend and she says she plays paddle two or three times a week as well and i was just where am i slotting this in <laughs> yeah and i was like right one workout a week and also i'm just gonna be really blunt here just so that you can be realistic i was like you work too much but i'm not saying try cut that down anytime soon i'm like just, point just try to work with yeah. me for the next three or four, four months and i was like there's a girl called leanne in the group chat because they're all one-on-one -on -one clients but i also have a group chat yeah, i was like yeah. if you want to ask her anything but she was in a very similar position to you and she and i never tell people break up with someone quit your job yeah, or yeah, anything yeah. i just be like this is causing this it's so fact, just it's be factual, realistic right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah yeah i just be yeah. realistic with it you can't i was like you can't go to the gym three times a week you do you just can't yeah um so but when i have those conversations the reason i'm so passionate about coaching as well is because i look at all the other coaches and i'm like what the fuck would he say to yeah. someone in that situation yeah, yeah. 1400 that, calories yeah, and exactly. like a photo yeah, shoot yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, scares yeah. the yeah. fuck out of me yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's why i'm so passionate about stuff and you'll, you'll be the same as me you've had people come on and like fuck i would love to see the conversations that they've had before they'll go i was with this client and actually this so everyone in that 12 in that 12 week group that i brought on not one single person i was where i was like less than 1800 calories not one of them right and you know i'm the all, same and they all go fucking hell like i'm, I'm struggling to eat this amount and i'm like fuck what you know what i mean like just and that's only... i think that's more a mental block i've been that this topic comes up all the, obviously it yeah, comes up all the time yeah, yeah. you have you have the exact same conversation as me okay. but i'm starting starting to sort of realize it's more a mental block yeah than but, but so, so the majority of these people that had that specific one were i was with person x and they gave me this and you're like fucking hell those conversations must have been savage and what i hate about that most is that when people take someone on as a client they want to use them as a marketing tool from the outset and like i think that fucks the whole experience for somebody right for the start if if your initial thing is i want you to take photos and check in with me you should know straight away from the start you're probably going to be used as a as a marketing tool and i think that thwarts the whole relationship it doesn't only fuck it forever because if i'm taking on for someone for 12 weeks i want them to never need a coach ever again in their life that is the perfect Do you know what else fucks up the relationship pushing at people's pain points to make them feel yeah, like they yeah, need, they, 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 they need there's they a need lot you. of that yeah 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 i'd like yeah I'll, if like I get great joy when somebody 
leaves me as a client and they go, I'm happy enough now with this. You know what I mean? Because it means you can help more people. I know that there's a retention thing and blah, blah, blah. But if you're constantly telling them they're shit and they need to be in this shape and need to do this, like if they can leave a bit better, eating a bit better, knowing what they should be lifting, like you've done your job well. You know what I mean? That's, like, the, goal. That's the goal. And it is the goal, but everybody loses sight of that. It's how long can I keep them on for? How much bullshit can I feed them so that they stay with me and all this kind of stuff? And that, that's why I like 12 weeks as a, as a mindset thing, right? It's more about habits. It's more about, you can't really teach much in that. And you should as shit, should not, if it's somebody that's new, be getting a transformation, in my opinion, out of someone in that amount of time. Like, I don't think they're, you should be at a low enough calories to be able to lose that amount of weight. You shouldn't be lifting enough to be able to do such a thing. And if you can, you've done it all the wrong way. And that person's fucked in 24 weeks, guaranteed every single time. That's yeah. My first four to six weeks is try to pe build people up to that calorie mark. Yeah. So I had bog standard, just start all women on 2000. Yeah. And it's not like you need 2000. I'm going to have to get you up to that. Yeah. Every like time, a, every time. And the guys that do 2,500 or 2,600. Yeah. And again, I'm not like, here, this isn't your, like, this calorie goal is for you. I'm giving you the bog standard because I know you're going to, like, yeah. Yeah. want to under eat and I'm trying to get that out of your system. Yeah. And then only until your relationship with food and exercise has got a wee bit better, well, maybe diet you if that's... Sometimes they come back to me and go, here, I don't want diet. And I'm like, you've yeah, learned. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've like, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's ideal. That's what you want. Yeah, right? and I'm not uh, anti-diet. At yeah, all, people yeah, think yeah. people tarnish me with that, and I'm like, I'm not anti diet at all. Stuff you, I um, yeah. I'm just like, don't keep, don't force it. I, well. um, and, and I've got this this classic thing where I said this a, a little while ago in a bit of content. You can either lose and gain the same ten pounds forever, or if you're wanting to lose, you can lose one pound a week for quite a while. And like, I always think that same ten pounds. I think I did a little video of it where I made him a little purple monster and that, and it's like that will stay with you forever if you're in that phase of. I'm going to pick up this diet and this diet and this diet. That little thing, that 10 pounds, you'll stay and you'll gain and you'll lose it and you'll gain it and you'll lose it forever. If you stick to all this non-sustainable 10 week, 12 week fucking mm -hmm. nonsense. Whereas if you can do it in a way where oh, I can do it sensibly, I know what I should be in roughly to lose a bit of weight. Like, and I'm always of that opinion. Everybody knows what they should be in. Like everybody at the core knows. I don't like demonizing bad and good foods, but you can, I'm eating a bit healthier lately and I'm losing a bit of weight. It's no that. It's difficult. more just the lens they view it yeah. through rather yeah, yeah, yeah. than it being like, because you have some coaches going, you should have a Chinese at the weekend. I'm like, mm, should they though? Yeah, if you can <laughs> not have it. Yeah, no, I'm not going to say, please go and have one. It's like, probably not. Um, uh, what was it? I have, So the, that free session, there was a guy and a girl and I just paired them together because I'm trying to do one to two. Yeah, I, yeah, I, well, I've got an image in my head of being able to do one to like five people and it being like teaching them deadlifting, squatting or bench pressing, but getting that good at it that I can go, how, what are all your abilities like? Have, have you done class stuff before? Not really. I've only ever done one to two or one to three. I've never done classes, yeah. but all the classes that I would have done in gyms would have been stuff I don't agree with. The class in my yeah, last gym was called yeah. Flabulous. Fuck me. So <laughs> that goes against every great, like oh, every fiber me. in my oh, being fuck. is Everyone anti. That. Oh, fuck so me. that's why oh, I've never done classes. Yeah, yeah. I, and all or even our like classes <coughs> that the PTs were running, it would be like probably the high rock stuff, but I joined in a few times and then there'd be a 60 year old guy in there bandaged knee doing like 50 air squats and yeah, i'd be yeah. like i don't like this i don't agree with any it's the one side of crossfit that's the most so there are bad crossfit coaches cool but a good crossfit coach can take a class of 12 and regress and make it an individual experience for so them. that's kind of what i want i want to be able to build up i think for like strict deadlifting and stuff yeah my abilities i don't think i'll be able and equipment wise i don't think i'll be able to take more than four or five at a time yeah. and really give them on a specific movement like a deadlift yeah. be quite hard but that's what i want i want to build up to be able to do that yeah. and do them for free Aye. locally so there's a so outside of this there's a, a guy that when i did my pt course they do small group pt and it does very well and they the feedback from it's mental so they do one to four one to five and it's does exceptionally mm. well um like from a feedback point of view, not from our like. I'll need point. I'll need six months of doing that to get it right. Even them, I yeah. came in and went here, user a trial. <coughs> well, how I'm gonna maybe run this, and I I don't even really want money out of that for the next like six months. Yeah, I just yeah, want yeah. to get good at being able to 
split it. I know yeah. what I'm doing and be like, right, yeah. okay, I can see that straight away. She's not going to be able to do that sort of thing. It's a skill, I mean? that management of two, especially if you've done from one. Like I did the opposite, which was just as hard going from 12 to one. And you're trying to think about what the fuck well, did I talk about? What am I supposed about? to do with this? I am <laughs> Who are you shagging? <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm standing that was one. my go-to all the time. <laughs> yeah. so, Who are you in the dating scene? <laughs> I, 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 I suppose it probably... You say it's kind of small town, but there it's really small town. So I, I like I probably know who they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. yeah, I don't have to ask. But like, so that was hard for me from twelve to one. So I imagine the the other way around is equally difficult. But I'm just standing there watching them doing a set. Like, <sighs> I don't know what to do here. This is really I didn't. Cool. I didn't find. I really enjoyed it. I Not that I didn't it. find it difficult, but I was wired. As in, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You, when you're doing something, that, you're just hyper aware. That's kind of. I, it's yeah, just a bit new. Yeah. So I was like, I was hyper aware that way. But I really enjoyed it, and then. I didn't fuck it up, and I have the skill set to do it. I was going to say, yeah, there's it's more a chance of fucking like up. I want to then add another person in, see how it. And I just, and, I just over prepare. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you want to nail it as well. Yeah, like, I don't want to do a shit session yeah, with yeah, people, yeah, even yeah, if it's yeah, free. Yeah. One of the, but one of the, I think the reason I started talking about that. One of the the guy said to me, I was like, "Have you what have you done before? Have you done any PT with anyone?" And he was like, "I had a coach," and I was like, "What were you on for?" And he was like, "Weight loss." And he was, and I was like, "What did he have you doing?" He was like. He was like train he was making me train legs and back for weight loss and i went what and he went i like and i so was i was like what does that look like and he was like oh just training legs and like back and i was like right what exercise and he was like oh mainly deadlifting and stuff and i went for weight loss and i was <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. and i was just like make it make sense you know, you know, <laughs> and he was like i don't understand either and i was like okay. you know what's, what's funny when when you come across that like surely Surely, I know it because we're wrapped up in it. And even when you were on socials and when I'm on it, you think, oh, calorie deficit, people get it. But like, I think there are still lots of people that don't get it. Yeah. Which is mental. And I think, I think that's got a lot to do with like the spot reducing belly fat thing, the fucking like, I hate all that shit. Like, it's just thwarted so many people who shit themselves go, I'll dip my toe in. You dip your toe in for two seconds, you go, ah, oh, fuck, well, it doesn't matter. And you have no idea. People it's don't matter. know anything. And it's the same way, like, if you ask me about, it, like something to do with tech or whatever i won't know and like you have yeah, to kind of view yeah, it that yeah. way what do you know fuck all about me politics like if you so i have to view that as like right people know so nothing about fitness yeah. i think it was jordan Sight and mike vicanti were talking about something they're talking about joe rogan's podcast and uh, do you know who mike vicanti is no, no. so he so i used to follow him so this is a podcast i promote all the time on here it's called how to be a personal trainer right. and oh, wait, I, I heard you talk i've heard you talk about it a couple i spent times all i was wanting a call center i listened to every single one i still listen yeah. to it and there see everything we are talking about yeah. that's the way they are like get good at your job work yeah, in person yeah, yeah. all of that box um and i found him because he used to train gary v Right, okay. And I used to watch him before he even got into the gym because I used to do a sport called freestyle football and I liked all his... I've already talked about this before. I, I he liked all his stuff, entrepreneurial yeah. business mindset yeah. stuff and he's just class. But they were talking about how they listen to the Joe Rogan podcast and every time they hear him talk about nutrition, they're like, oh my good God, he is an absolute moron. Yeah. And they're like, right, if he's a moron with that, what else is on that podcast yeah, that i just yeah. fully believe because there's an yeah, expert yeah, on it exactly uh, and it's mad. bollocks yeah, so like yeah. the amount of stuff you probably pick up and you're like oh my god that's utter bollocks yeah yeah but you just go oh it sounds like it's right because they're talking about it and that's it's an uh, expert so people do that with uh, food all these people that are going on stephen bartlett's podcast that oh, are mate, peddling don't. the biggest amount of shit you've ever that, heard that annoys me a lot of stephen bartlett stuff because i really like him like i rate him but then the people he brings on, I'm listening to them, I'm going, fuck me. What, what I'm not liking is he's investing in a lot of these businesses. Yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, enjoying yeah, that agreed, aspect of agreed. him. And you can clearly see it when somebody's tripping absolute shit because he's smart. Like he knows what he's talking about. He's very intelligent, he, man. He knows, he knows how to make money. Exactly. But he also knows what he's talking about generally. And when you watch somebody come on and blatantly chat shit, you're like, well, there must be a reason you're allowing them to chat shit to a million people. Ah, right. Okay. It's because you're in on it. That makes sense. Like it's fucking man. <sighs> And it's funny because you see James Smith go on it three times yeah. and then he starts to call out stuff on it. Aye. Um, and he has them at his events at the same time and I'm like, my brain does I can't not understand yeah, the what, what else what's made. going on in the background. What do they say to each other yeah, I know. when James, he has <laughs> someone on that James Smith clearly disagrees with? Aye. What do they say to what each is, other? Aye, what are they talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get it. They should even go, listen, I know this guy. 
as top of shape. <laughs> There's 300 just, mil in his bank account yeah, for me. Just, just, just deal with it. You know, what uh, I mean? just, move just on. don't call this one out. I uh, just, just leave him alone for for ten minutes. It's, You'll be all right. You'll fucking absolutely mental. Um, I'm trying to think what because there was loads. Of, how long do you have left? I, I won't go more than like an hour and fifty anyway. Um, let's just talk because there was definitely. I didn't expect us to go into half of those subjects and it has been a very erratic conversation, but I think it's from these fucking drinks because my be, brain yeah, is be. absolutely wired from that new Th- This is stuff. just me generally. Like, you catch it? me on a day, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get the odd day up. like this. Maybe it's because yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit excited about that free session. I think I got a wee buzz from oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. probably what it is. Now, what have you found like CrossFit communities to be like? So, like I said to you when you were like, you called me a CrossFit game, and I was like, I probably will train CrossFit at one point, you're like, be a bastard. Yeah, and then yeah. I was like, you're a prick, because yeah. now if you start peddling shit about me in the CrossFit community, I'm not going to be able to go yeah, to them. Because yeah, yeah. I've seen a few yeah. people already like comment and stuff, your sister was at me oh, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what put me off a wee bit was I went to that one in Bali, and it was the clique- one, one of the clickiest places I've yeah, ever yeah. been in my life. And it was full of like, online coaches and stuff, but... The typical influencer online coach yeah. that's all their videos is just them like with their top off snatch and whatever yeah. and i and i found that they were all nice on the surface but it felt you like weren't we, a part of it it right. felt i it felt yeah. like felt like being in school and not being allowed to sit with people yeah does that make sense it felt yeah, like being no, in no, the common no, no, room 100 yeah, yeah and so. i wasn't there for long i could have broken in if i wanted to i could have like been fake and oh, yeah. but i was like fuck this man so so i would personally ignore that experience and it's, that's what i did say when i said that is that's bali i reckon yeah so not it's, the i think it's less about it being bali and i think it's more about it being that specific gym so the thing with crossfit is and also i it, met the guy that runs it and the business owners un, unreal well yeah. sound yeah, yeah well yeah. well completely sound. completely and, and what what they aren't and are in control of is the community aspect right so that's a very visitor gym right so the bulk of people, probably 90% of them aren't from there. They just are there to visit and they're dropping in and blah, blah. So what's like unique about it is CrossFit, although it's not, they're called affiliates, it's not like an affiliate marketing scheme. So what they do is you buy into the brand. You say, right, I can put CrossFit over the door and they basically leave you alone to do it as you want. They can give you guidance, but they let you do it. And so that means that each place is going to be unique to the person who owns it. And it's just like anything else. You're going to get good owners and you're going to get bad owners. But typically within it, you'll build these little communities. So a perfect example, where it's been here, CrossFit Airdrie, right? So I dropped That's in, the one I was going to yeah, try. So I dropped into there randomly. I was I was working at another CrossFit comp. I was taking photos. And so I dropped in. It's in the football stadium, isn't it? Ah, it's, it's absolutely it? massive. It's, it's huge. It's big. Re- is it in the football stadium? I don't know. It's it big. says the sign on the Airdrie ah, huge, stadium. Huge, big. Ah, yeah. So it's it's in there. Um, it's on like one, one side of it. And I never met any of the people in there before. Never ever before I went in and then and then ended up getting followed and following like 10 or 11 people on Instagram with an interaction between two classes. And so like the Scottish and UK CrossFit community is unreal. There are a few like, I kind of call them rotten apples, but it's just a result typically of ego where, for example, where we are, there's a couple of CrossFit boxes close to each other. And so sometimes some of them will see each other as competition or they'll see each other as, as pals. And the ones that see each other as pals those ones all over the country work incredibly well together and you can just wander into somewhere and they'll welcome you in you'll feel and actually bali's difficult because everyone's ripped everyone's in shape everyone can snatch 100 kilos and fucking out whereas in every other gym it's 90 10 the other way it's 90 percent normal humans who are just there because they like to have friends who work out with them and it's 10 percent of this like athlete-esque person so yeah i wouldn't let that thwart your kind of perception of it but it's very much down to the owners and the coaches all working together and so it kind of ebbs and flows that way where sometimes it can be quite shit because it can click off that way like if you imagine there's some high few performing... people start shagging each other well that because so that, that, that was what was it. clearly going on in bali by yeah. the way that's what i could see i was like user shagging yeah. you've shagged her she hates you i was like do you know what i mean i yeah. was like yeah you yeah. could see that happening and like Yes, that does exist, but you can remove yourself from it. You can either choose to be engulfed within it because, like, there are people who are very culty within it. That it's like exists. a workplace. It, it, is, it is like a workplace. Um, but, like, I think the overall, generally, it does very good. And I've seen it do so much good for hundreds and hundreds of people over the years. Like, I, I'm in a unique position where 
I put on a functional fitness comp. You have to be very specific when you say, because you can't call it CrossFit because um, it's not, because CrossFit's a brand. Um, and then, so I've been like, I've worked in that gym. I have done photos at CrossFit competitions. I've competed all over like the UK. So I've seen every, from every lens and every aspect. And generally, although there's like some of it is shit, that tends to be in like the competitive space. And because that's the stuff you see in the games on the TV and all that kind of stuff, people think that it's, that is the bulk of it. And then there's this little extra bit. Realistically, when you're in amongst it, it's 90% normal humans just working out to get in shape and be healthy and 10% of that. And so you'll find that you're welcomed very much into the 90%. But if you see the 10%, you're like, fuck, I'm no welcome there. And that's probably right. You probably are not welcome there yet. But then you can work your way into getting into work. Mm. So that's kind of how that works. But generally, I do believe it's a force for for good. And I think it... I have zero clams with CrossFit. Yeah. You'll yeah, never yeah. see me calling out CrossFit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think the, the people who call out mostly, um, based on experience I've had people come in, is usually... Bodybuilders, rugby players, people who come in, get pasted by a girl, like that lift, outlifts them, smokes them in a workout. It's it's an ego thing because you have to go in and be shit basically forever. Like <laughs> you're never going to be amazing at it, really, especially unless you start at like 12, 13 years old. So using it as a training methodology to be healthier, if you can accept that that's what it is for you, what happens is people get obsessed with it because it's there's so much stuff and then they end up injured and then it gets a bad name. And there's a lot of stuff that looks fucking ridiculous like flippy flop pull-ups and all that there's there's reasons for that because it's part of the sport of crossfit and not like the actual realm of crossfit and the sport of crossfit and crossfit in general are two very different things um but yeah i don't like usually i, I don't try and give people a sales pitch on it ever i just say just fucking drop in and try it see what you think and then i'm confident i couldn't say that about bali but i'm confident that if you were to drop in here somewhere like I know like a couple of the coaches at Airdrie, if you dropped in, you'd love it. Like that's just a, I think I say anybody and I don't even give the sales pitch when they go, oh, what, what should I, why should I try cross? I'm just go They're like, oh, why? No bother, just try it. Like I don't do that. Um, I don't even do that on my page or anything like that. You know what I mean? Um, what was it like for you when you started? Oh, well, because I was chubby in that. Um, did you start at the 120 yeah, kilo mark? Yeah, yeah, just coming off of it, I'd started. Did you have a good, a did you say there was a bit of, uh, you said the what is the one you started at the bit ran badly or something. So uh, there's a juicy story there, and yeah, I want to the, hear the, it. There's a lot, and and I know that like everybody that follows me will will, will listen to this. So I have to be very particular because, like, I try to be a general force for good in the local area. Um, and out him, out him. <laughs> nah, so on. so no, he, ran, he so he he started CrossFit in the borders. Like he he, he had the first gym. He had it that existed, and he was fantastic to start off with he got there was a big group of us that started all at the same time who all still do it now a cup one of them is another gym owner elsewhere so is somebody else and they now there's like three or four crossfit gyms in the borders and he started it but what happened was he was like very good at it and he was one of the originals in it him and his missus and that and they got very good but then what happened is they started to breed some pretty decent athletes who got better than them and that wasn't received well and by then, them. yeah, by them. And then we wanted to compete and wanted to like do other things and spread the message of it. But it was very much, he was kind of like, this is my thing. And like, I have to be the best and this is my, and and we were like, but that we we had, we started to consume other CrossFit media from other places and we're just like- Just to see how it's run and stuff. Aye, like, aye. And we're like, oh well, shit, this is, the, there's more than just a, a, this little gym in the borders. CrossFit's a huge thing. Let's spread this far and wide. And then the two personalities just- Crossed with him. each other, everybody and him, and then he kind of another gym opened, and then everybody kind of moved, and then he was ostracized out the way, and then so the new CrossFit Tweed Bank that exists is his old gym, and he's now, funnily, I can't say the name of it, never mind, he's at another gym, um, and the two CrossFit gyms in Gala kind of work in harmony, fine, and then he's just off to the side elsewhere, not even under a CrossFit brand anymore, just running his own thing, just a functional. Yeah, functional fitness. But it's funny in his videos because you can tell he wants to say CrossFit, but he's not allowed, um, which is which is hilarious. But yeah, not not like ill ill thing me to him. He he will chat shit to everybody about me, one hundred percent about me and about everybody else in this space. And I have no ill will. He started CrossFit in the borders. He um, brought it there. He was a fantastic coach back in the day. It just went ego trap south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that was what happened. So now now it's everybody lives. I would say in harmony, but not really in harmony. Close to it, as close to harmony as can be. 
Why does that happen so much in this space? Right? I, I, everyone sees it as a big competition, don't they? Even like here's my even view. like one to one PTs. Yeah, it's like yeah, even, you're even within gyms, it becomes like a competition. Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. oh, this is my client and all that. But so, so I've he, just no, I've genuinely never fell into that. I'm quite glad, it. but yeah, like I just don't. There's so many people to coach. Yeah, so I've got this view, right? And so locally, when I make that content. I think that if I take, say, I don't know, say I get a few thousand views on something and say say, say something got 10,000 views and a thousand people decided, right, I'm going to get into fitness. There isn't one gym within a hundred miles that could take them all. So the way I see it is if everybody buys into it and shares the stuff and talks about it and shit, like we all win, quote unquote win. The larger mission for everybody, I feel like from some, not some sort of moral high ground, but I feel like we should all be trying to get as many people into it a space as they can i don't care if it's sport inclusive i don't care if it's a gym if it's any kind of training methodology we all win but then what happens is i feel like sometimes people think they would rather get their own two clients than have somebody else send them 50 which is such a fucking weird way to think i dare get it it's like wood for the trees situation um and i think a lot of folk get trapped up in that they'd rather like I won this thing rather than I won this thing because we all worked as a team. As soon as you start getting the dopamine hits from more followers or maybe more money. More followers being a big thing, aye. Um, Followers more than money, by the way. Yeah, agreed. Followers is a dark path to go down. Chasing place to go. And I'm lucky that I didn't, I was like 25, 26 and I'd already built a social media form from the freestyle stuff and I kind of knew what that involved. Well, I was like, yeah. But I've seen people way younger than me getting loads of followers and I'm like, that's a bad thing to happen to you. Aye. Like sub twenty two getting followers is not good. Makes yeah. you think you're famous and you're not. Aye, aye, Makes aye. you think you're something and you're not. Yeah, it's grim. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, but now I'm in that realm. I'd rather have like I don't know two hundred people that watched and engaged with my shit than having ten thousand who were just there for the laugh. And, and you're then, making more an impact on those yeah, two hundred people. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Like I'd rather have like rather than I don't know two thousand, three thousand people scrolling past my shit. If I've got two hundred people who literally join in and conversate and are making an impact to those people, I'd rather have that every day of the weekend. Here's a genuine question for you. And we'll end on this, right? But it might take us 10, 15 minutes or something to go through it. But it's just I've not actually. I wrote down random things on this. I don't actually look at it. I've like, he posts about vapes. It's like, do you know, there's not, there's not much <laughs> detailed I wonder, I wonder information what the on it. The SpongeBob was man. It's man. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> you got me you got me I, it's, only, I, it's only thing i can draw as well which is why that i think i have drawn a few sponge bobs yeah, in my well. time usually there's a cock in here somewhere oh, right, there might be um, but about so it's not a general topic that comes up about six months ago someone asked me one a really interesting question where you he said do you think if personal trainers who are getting views like so whatever on instagram or like personal training in general has been a bit hype just now, yeah. I would say. He was like, do you think people who are posting content or just PTs in general can genu- genuinely lower rates of obesity? And just go with that with whatever you want to go with, whatever comes in your head. Do you actually think PTs can make an impact as a whole on the levels of obesity, just say in the UK? Can they or do they? Can they? Yes, I think they can. But I think we're miles away from it because I think if it was things like this, like me and you, right, willing to have an open conversation, accepting that we help two very different demographics rather than saying, oh, fucking hell, I'm fuming that he's going to steal anybody that might work with me. And that comes back to that message I said before, where I say, if you cast the net to so many people and say, right, rather than being like, I can't help you with this, I'd be like, the space can help you with this and, and actually being like here like if someone comes to me a while on crossfit i go do you live near well, the borders well it, it, exactly but i think that until we remove i don't even know what the barriers are is it selfishness is it because there's so little money in it because there's so many is that maybe what it is i fuck knows i think if because there's so many now like there's it's an absolute army and the barrier to entry is so low and i feel like if people just went yeah we're all wanting to help people then absolutely it could make such a huge difference to it like a massive massive difference like i don't know how we get there i don't know what the what the uh, because i'm people... just gonna try yeah no same try my just hardest try your best ah, yeah, yeah. do plenty of stuff for free and all that and like i've got an i sent a deal i'd love to get to the point where i just even do anyone that's sub two years in coaching just be like here's everything i know yeah and just be like t- 20 of you can come out there there's yeah. 20 seats i don't think i'm in a position to do that well i actually I am but not yeah, to yeah. charge 
and as a water charge yeah but just be like 20 of you and then set up a whatsapp after it and i'll try to help you however i've done free groups in the past i've done like a free weight loss group when i first started that was hell on earth i literally created yeah. like one of the worst exist like the worst culty things i've ever Did seen you? in my life and i didn't even do it they created the cult of themselves oh, no. <laughs> inside Unreal. it so Unreal. it's coming at that again from a but you're a lot more optimistic than me my answer was no <laughs> yeah but well to be honest if the answer was will it no like in the yeah. current state it's in will it fuck but i was thinking more i went down the route of like how politics and how how things are going in general yeah, yeah, yeah like with we are we're all pretty much people like if you're going to be a pt you're probably coming with like little funding you're funding yeah. yourself and you're battling against corporations that are putting billions and billions of pounds into marketing and the marketing fast food into marketing yeah, pre yeah. pretty much everything that's anti what we are trying to do yep. and i was like i just don't she has been able to shout louder than them without the financial backing. Yeah, because so I feel I feel like it's competition again, good against bad, basically. Yeah, I guess when you say I, because when you say PTs, like I, I group it all together as CrossFit coaches, and you know, yeah, so, no, I would so as I'm, well. So, yeah, so, yeah. So, so I'm coming, and I think that sole PTs living themselves wanting to make a living. Oh, so you're thinking of the yeah, fitness yeah, corporations yeah, as yeah, well? Yeah, I think if if you. Oh, but the most of them are fucked. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they are. They are fucked. fucked not, I'm not right, saying but, CrossFit, but like yeah, general no, gym no, companies no, yeah, are yeah, all yeah, fried. Sure, I pure and all that. So I, in fact, it's a funny story. Pure came at me. They were opening a big gym locally, and I was like, I, I did a big thing where I was like, you don't fucking need this. This is nonsense. Blah blah blah. And they were like, stop that. I was like, oh, unreal. To get sued. Right, so, um. That happened, but then because I made a comment that was basically like, your perfect avatar of a client is somebody who pays you and doesn't come along. They were like, defamation. <laughs> I'm right though, mm. like I am. And so, yeah, I, I think there's definitely- Same with David Lloyd. Yeah, fucking mental. They like, just make even more money. I've met so many people that pay for David Lloyd and yeah, don't go. Because I always like you ask the question, right? If, if, you, if everybody that you have as a member wanted to show up on one day, even if you give them time slots, would they fit? No so you fucked it you know what i mean you can't service that that amount of people um but i think that there are more trying to do good than bad over time i like to be optimistic i've never been this optimistic before in my life and i think it's because i see locally the impact that i can have and if you know and people like yourself and stuff here so i think if there was enough of that to cover enough of an area i do think it could make a big enough difference that's what i'm gonna try i'm just gonna try like Dominate it's not the right word, but like just really make an impact on like North and Louth, South, North and South Lanarkshire, yeah, and just get as many people as I sort of know or like the clients of clients, just to get them even following me and yeah, because because like, what, what what I want to try and do so like a, a small so I started you're talking about mentorship yesterday so I I do pay for a group that I'm part of right and it's it's got like it's called young and lazy it's like a bunch of younger entrepreneurs i'm not even young i'm old as shit but um younger entrepreneurs who are like starting businesses and stuff and two of them are pts in there as well um and well i think there's three actually three of them and we had an interesting conversation last week where it was the first time where we all went this is how i do stuff let's share let's share and actually i think we could as a group have more of an impact on other coaches that could exponentially do more for more people than us doing for our own section. So say North and South Lanarkshire, you crack it and you get everybody. And then say the borders, I crack it and get everybody. There's obviously multiple other people down there doing massive, amazing things. But if people, when you have a bigger follow and if you can get more coaches on board, because I'm always like, I'd love to have more people trying to do more in the space. And I think that that's a bigger impact than us trying to think, you know, can I build like my app, for example, can I have this? And how many people can that help? How many people can I help? It shouldn't be that. It's how many people can I help to help other people? And that is where you've cracked it. It's a long road to that, but I think that- Oh, like nowhere, nowhere near her, but- But I think with people like, have followings like you, I know you're like, oh, following this meaning, and they look up to it and they go, right, actually normal guy who has normal outlooks on stuff like, I could get to there and have an influence on more people because folk go, oh, what the fuck can I do? And I do, I'm defeated all the time. I'm like, oh, I'm just me. I just do this thing. You know, I do it all the time and there's, and I'm quite confident. So you think of the people who are on confidence level below me are just like, well, what's the fucking point? I can't be asked. I'd rather have my 10 PT clients than make a difference to hundreds of people when they really could. And I think that'll, yeah, make a big difference. Yeah, that's 
Definitely more an optimistic outlook than myself. <laughs> I'm quite a cynic. I'm getting better. I'm a, I've been a massing cynic. I'm getting a wee bit better. Like ah, it's, it's ingrained in me from my dad. Yeah, so yeah, Just yeah, to be yeah, cynical yeah. about absolutely everything. My dad can't watch an advert without getting angry. Cole compares is his least favourite. He gets raging at Cole Raging, ah, yeah, yeah. I like, can see absolutely that. fuming. These are just ripping people off. <laughs> it's like, true. Fucking hell, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. Right, we'll end it there. Um, fuck, that was a long one. But... Thank you very much for coming on. I'm just going to do a little, I'm not going to do it just now, but I'll do a little intro and give you a bit more, uh, so you don't need to introduce yourself, yeah. but you didn't anyway. But um, but yeah, thank you very much for coming on. Good and man. if anyone's interested in CrossFit down the borders, I don't know how many people listen to me from the borders, not very much probably, but to- They will now, in, they will to this one. Well, yeah. Absolutely. Go on and tweet back and please don't give me abuse. <laughs> nah, they won't now. <laughs>